Hi everyone, uh, welcome to NMC MC1. Um, today we'll actually be dealing with um, chapter 5. Uh, well, it's chapter 5 according to the notes. Um, the textbooks have uh, a lot of additions, so um, you'll actually just navigate your way through. Um, we'll be looking at diffusion. Um, and diffusion, it's actually part of a, a concept of uh, uh, mass transport. Mass transport. Basically, the movement of particles through, you know, a, a particular area over um, a specific time. And we have... Uh, types of uh, diffusion right um, the first one is interstitial interstitial diffusion um, this is where you have um, a movement of small atoms of small atoms through an interstitial opening or interstitial void interstitial void um, uh, typical examples we have of interstitials is um, like carbon in an iron right um, in metallurgy, these are used for, uh, strengthening mechanisms. When you add some carbon to to iron, sometimes you do that uh, in order to uh, to strengthen the material, um, or maybe nitrogen as well uh, in iron, because these are small uh, atoms. So you'd have this. Say this is your your atoms, your Fe atoms. In a given uh, material, and then the interstitials will move in between these uh, the spaces in between, like the small spaces in between, through the process of diffusion. Okay, uh, and um, secondly, we have our. Uh, Uh, substitutional diffusion substitutional diffusion uh, this um, you know uses vacancies sorry we can seize uh, to enable movement enable movement so you have something like this um, you have like I'm gonna draw a lot of them but you know say well this is a big vacancy So the item th move through like uh, big atomic spaces, not like uh, the one above. Um, it's through small spaces. So substitution and diffusion takes place by movement through uh, vacancies. Um, okay, let me just you know uh, show you an example. Uh, now this uh, drawing was actually adapted from um, NMC notes. Um, you have two two metals. Um, this one being copper. Um, I think the one with the gray representation being uh, nickel. 
right now this is at time zero this is before diffusion starts taking place and then you can actually draw a line here in between uh, this is the interface this is where the copper atoms meet the nickel atoms so before that um, let's say you don't have um, you know enough uh, driving force for diffusion to take place so nothing is going to happen just like having two materials against each other and usually when you introduce like um, a particular driving force um, that gets to the activation energy of the movement of these atoms this is an alloy uh, the alloying process starts to 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 initiate uh, such that now you can see from from the graph here initially you have 100 percent uh, copper on the left 100 percent nickel on the right um, on the next drawing you see that uh, when diffusion starts taking place you see that now there's um, there's uh, an interchange between the copper atoms and the nickel atoms um, and then you start having a certain amount of uh, nickel within the copper region and you start having a certain amount of uh, copper in the nickel region so that's actually why you have this this profile because um, at a certain distance the, the amount of copper atoms are decreasing because they are moving towards uh, the um, the nickel and then vice versa the nickel is doing the same so here you won't have like a hundred percent nickel or hundred percent copper so basically that's um, uh, diffusion um, in a nutshell um, now we're gonna look at uh, uh, steady state dis uh, diffusion um we have uh, what is called uh, diffusion flux right um in steady state you have what's called uh diffusion flux uh diffusion flux uh, which is invariably uh, the amount of uh mass transport right um passing through a particular area over a certain period of time so if you have um, uh, say you know a sheet of metal let me just you know try and draw it in 3d if I can something like this okay if you have something like this and you know you have particles having to go through this uh, whether it's a gas you you want to actually carburize uh, meaning that you want to put some carbon through into the into this uh let's assume this is fe this is iron now uh in a steady state you have what you call a flux uh, this means that uh over this area right over this area a certain mass m of the particles of carbon right are actually passing through are passing through this entire area and it takes a certain time for for that to actually take place um, and uh, in a steady state actually um, the the concentration gradient uh, does not change with time so we have a steady state uh, concentration profile uh, which is represented in terms of uh, fixed first law uh, fixed first law of diffusion right uh, now what that means is this when we're talking about a constant concentration profile um, this drawing is also available in your textbook or notes. You actually see this same exact drawing. Now this is a uh, distance within the material. Distance, and then you have the concentration. 
can just do this uh, C A. Okay, it's not straight. And then C B. Now he, this profile is a concentration profile uh, down the concentration gradient. Um, this is a steady state because now the slope, the slope is is constant, so it's not changing. Uh, the concentration gradient is not changing with time and flux can can actually be represented as um, diffusion coefficient uh, over delta c uh, multiplied by delta c sorry uh, over uh, delta x so this is the concentration profile or concentration gradient And then this we have a minus here, right? We have a negative here. This is like a negative. Sorry, you can see this negative. Uh, it actually means that we're going down a concentration profile. A concentration profile. So now, uh, concentration gradient, whatever that you want to call it, and then we'll have like a negative uh you know since it's the slope is a negative slope because you're moving from high concentration to uh, a low concentration now this is actually to to accommodate for the the negative uh, concentration gradient that will actually be acquired from this um this delta c delta x equation so that the entire uh, equation of uh, flux can remain can remain positive so let me just you know uh, try and explain it um, using another sketch here um, concentration the concept of concentration but let me just draw a, like a, a rectangle here and then say that this is uh, length x you know or thickness so of the material uh, say for example that the concentration I and then you're moving down a concentration profile to you know CX or whatever that it, it may be now it's moving the movement or the the, the diffusion is taking place uh, you know through uh, a steady uh, concentration profile this is actually you know, uh, a representation. So, usually the questions that are being asked in this um, chapter, or you know, about cons uh, steady state diffusion, it's uh, you have to relate the two equations. Some sometimes they can ask you questions that um, require you to relate the two equations. And sometimes it's just uh, one of the equations. You just need to understand what the problem is saying, and you you answer accordingly. So let's just do an example. Um, 